Jazz chords can seem like these mysterious scripts with difficult names. They sound beautiful, but you don't really know what's going on. And even if you can play this, then there are so many other things that you can do with the chords that you also want to check out. Of course, you need to practice playing the chords, but somehow just running up and down diatonic chords and inversions is not really helping you play like that. You need to really dig into the chords and learn how to use them. And there is one thing that you want to work on that can help you do just that. And it's going to teach you a lot of other great things at the same time about jazz, about harmony, theory and about the guitar. The exercise I'm talking about is not one of those exercises where you sit down every day with a metronome and go through your scales. What you want to work on is putting the chords that you practice to use and you want to put the theory that you know to use and in that process also learn to play a song as a beautiful chord melody arrangement. So how do you get started with this? A basic recipe for a chord melody arrangement is to learn your shell voicings and then take the song that you want to turn into a chord melody arrangement. Figure out how to play the melody on the two highest strings and put those two together by adding a chord under the notes that are on the first beat of the bar. And if there's no melody on the beat one, then just play the chord. This way, it's pretty simple to make your own harmonized version of that song. This already works as an arrangement, and it's not too difficult to create if you start with an easy song and not a bebop theme. But you can take it a lot further, and when you do that, then you start to develop a lot of useful skills when it comes to chords. I should probably also just mention that I'm using Days of Wine and Roses as an example in this video, because it's one of my favorite songs, but also because it's a great vehicle for some of the things that I'm going to cover later in the video when we start changing the chords. Already with this basic arrangement, you can start to tweak it and add in other chord voicings that you might like better than the shell voicings. Essentially, you can just experiment with adding other voicings instead of what you first had. You're just refining the first version and adding some more colors, as I'm doing here with a different F major 7, or adding the 9th on the E flat 7. This is about looking at what note is in the melody and then just trying to figure out what options you have for a chord under that. In Days of Wine and Roses, you have an A as the first melody note, and you can harmonize that with a drop 2 voicing, adding a 13th to that chord, or maybe adding a ninth to the whole sound by just shifting up a position. And there are many options and interesting colors that you can check out. When you're working on this, then you're getting a much better understanding of what notes are in the chords and how those chords actually sound in context, which is incredibly useful also when you're improvising. You might come across a place where you only have one option, but that really only means that you can explore how to create some variations of that chord and learn some new things and some new jazz voicings in that way. But as you're probably already realizing, then you want to do more than just play a chord here and there. You want to also add some movement to the arrangement within the chords to give it a flow, especially when there isn't any movement in the melody. In this next example, you'll see how you can add some moving voices that help you get to the next chord. And there are also a few different fills that you can add to not just play the chord, but also embellish it and make it more interesting. This is about finding practical ways to move a voice so that it helps you get to the next chord. Or realizing that there's nothing happening in the melody, so you have time to add an arpeggiated or more embellished version of that chord. This is really also something that's useful when you're comping. On the E flat 7, I'm also harmonizing each note of the melody to create a different sound. Now, there are many options to explore, and it's really just about trying things out and seeing what you like. This is, of course, already giving you a ton of options that you can develop in your own arrangements, but you can go even further and start changing the song to make it more your own and also more surprising to the listener. The most important thing to keep in mind when you reharmonize the song and change the chords is that you use that the listener expects to hear one thing and then you're playing something else. This sometimes means that it works better to introduce reharmonization as an embellishment when you have first played the normal changes. But you can have a lot of fun with this. Let's just start really simple by mostly just changing the sound on each of the chords and then maybe adding a few along the way. Here 
here the first basic F major 7 chord is turned into a more unstable and also more interesting F major 7 sharp 5. The A half diminished chord is embellished with a ninth, and the D7 is played with some diminished scale harmony, which is really a different sound that is always going to sort of rub a little bit against what we expect to hear. These are pretty easy ways to reharmonize the song by just choosing other sounds for the chords than you might expect. On the G minor 7 you can hear some added chords that work really well with keeping things moving along. So they're just there to add momentum to a long note in the melody. A more radical version where the chords are used more freely and just chosen to fit the melody and serve the bass movement, but for the rest pretty random, would sound something like this. The thing that stands out most in this arrangement is probably how I'm traveling from D up to G minor by moving up the bass in half steps and then just finding chords that fit the melody. And this results of course also in some, some resolutions that are a lot less common moving from F minor to F sharp minor to G minor, which is quite a different sound from the D7 that you normally expect there. There are so many things to learn about chords and explore on the fretboard like this. The other important things that you want to get started with for playing better jazz is being able to turn chords into great sounding comping. And if you check out this video, then you'll see how this is maybe not as difficult as you might think and how to really work on this on a song.